The second half I want to go over are entitlements. And an entitlement is a federal program that guarantees a specific le level of benefits to persons who meet requirements set by law. Sometimes this is done on income. My pen doesn't want to work. There we go. And sometimes it's done by a means test. And you can look at different requirements in there. Wow, this is not wanting to work at all. That can go over a, a formula to qualify. A person is entitled to benefits if they meet the criteria set by the federal government. Most of the time, again, I said that is income-based or if you pay into the system, uh, such as in Social Security, you are entitled to the benefits when it comes uh, time for your age requirement at 65. Spending on entitlement is mandated. I want to go over two types of spending. In the federal budget, there is mandatory spending and there is discretionary spending. Discretionary, discretionary means it is optional. That means these are areas that can be cut in the budget. Mandatory means it must be paid out and it is untouchable. For example, Social Security, if people have paid into the system, then that payment is mandated. You have to give it back to them by law. So when you think about doing the federal budget, an area such as Social Security cannot be cut. The Department of Defense, however, is discretionary and that is an area that can be cut. And that's why we hear more about cuts to those programs. I want to go over a couple examples. Social, Social Security is one of those areas because you pay into it and it comes out of your paycheck, you do uh, get Social Security uh, when you turn a certain age. Medicare, which is uh, a medical program of health insurance for the elderly, is also mandated. You cannot cut or you cannot pay Medicare. If a person meets, reaches a age requirement, then they are required uh, for that help. Medicaid is another program where you are aiding children uh, who may not have any parents, but there are certain uh, different requirements under Medicaid, and you can look those up if you want more specifics, but normally those are for children who cannot pay for themselves. Veterans programs, VA programs, are also mandated by federal law. Unemployment programs are mandated. If you qualify for unemployment for a certain amount of time, then you um, will receive benefits. These tend, all these programs tend to be very, very expensive. And when these balloon and we have to pay them, then that means our discretionary areas have to be cut. And with the increase of these programs becoming more and more expensive, then that means our federal budget will also go up. And we don't have enough people paying into the system, then we have too much revenue going out and that can be a cause for um, some of our troubles with the budget. Food stamps, retirement plans for federal employees is also another area. Positives and negatives. It provides needed benefits to American citizens. The government cannot delay or avoid payment in the budget. We talked about mandatory. Negatives are there's no congressional discretion on money allotted. It has to go out and be paid. And it often takes up a huge chunk of our budget. Entitlements account for two thirds. And again, if you don't have enough people paying into the system and we have more people who are um, on entitlement programs, it tends to put quite a strain on the budget. There's less money for discretionary spending. Remember again, discretionary is optional spending. Here is a list, and this is also in your book, a list of the major social welfare programs that we have today. Social Security is paid out in monthly payments for retired or disabled people, and it comes directly out of people who are currently working now, and it's given to the people who are retired. So if we have less people paying out and more people on um, disability for, or age requirement for Social Security, elderly people are living longer, then um, there's an imbalance in those types of areas. Medicare A, Medicare B, and you can see here retired or disabled or persons over 65, 
unemployment insurance, our weekly payments, and this is done at the state level. This is a big chunk in a block grant. Workers who have been laid off and cannot find work. These are means-tested programs, and I talked about that earlier. There is a definite formula that is needed. Medicaid, they get medical and hospital aid, and this is for the very poor or for children who cannot afford it. Food stamps are coupons that buy, um, are used to buy food, people who are qualifying by an income level. TANF, T-A-N-F, this used to be the welfare program, and they have renamed that the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. Families with children, either one parent or in some states two parent, where the breadwinner is unemployed. SSI supplementary security income are cash payments to the elderly, blind, and disabled. And children's health insurance are poor families with children who need additional aid. You can look at how the welfare portion started helping the poor, and this has been our social policy. It began welfare as we knew it. Social Security Act of 1935 was the first major step by the federal government to help protect people who were not saving uh, in a retirement plan. It set up the Social Security program, uh, and this is for families with disabilities and national assistance for, I'm sorry, for poor children. President Johnson also declared the war on poverty, and so he created programs uh, such as Head Start and other areas to um, prevent poverty in our nation. President Reagan went on and cut the ballooning welfare benefits and removed people from the rolls, and we saw a real need people did in government to start to reform the welfare system because it was creating generational problems. Attitudes toward welfare became race-coded, uh, typically because the numbers um, suggested that more people were African Americans who were on welfare. So what started is in 1996, this is a huge one right here, the Welfare Reform Act under President Clinton was established. And this has been on several AP tests. This says each state uh, was going to receive a fixed amount of money to run its own welfare programs because they knew what people needed best. This is an example of a block grant. People on welfare would have to find work within two years, so you had to show that you were uh, looking for work and not just dependent on the government. You could only be on welfare for five years, and the AFDC changed to TANF, and the welfare roles did decline. Again, the New Deal, the elderly, and the growth of Social Security. Social Security has grown rapidly since 1935. People are living longer, and now we have health insurance for those over the age of 65. Employers and employees contribute basically to what we call the Social Security Trust Fund. That is a bank account in, to which our Social Security contributions are deposited, and then Social Security checks are cut to eligible recipients by age. The problem with this program is the trust fund will soon not be, um, uh, what's the word I want? Solvent, I guess, as the ratio of workers to beneficiaries is narrowing. The future of Social Security, the problem, the number of Social Security contributors or workers is growing slowly while those retired is growing rapidly. You might hear of the Social Security problem in 2038, it is projected that we will not have enough money, and this has been a huge problem of Congress to try and fix this problem of entitlements and Medicare and Medicaid. Do we raise taxes? Do we cut benefits? Do you raise the retirement age or the Social Security age to 70 or 75, uh, it just meets with a lot of difficult situations. The last thing I want to talk about is the budget process, and this goes along with those entitlement programs that I just suggested. Remember, the president is in charge of making the budget, which they send to Congress. So the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget, asks agencies, please submit your budget. The agencies send their requests, so think of this Environmental Protection Agency, all those alphabet agencies that we talked about in the bureaucracy on the executive branch side. The OMB looks at it, revises the budget based on agency requests, and then you have the congressional side. Remember, the OMB is the president's side. The CBO also creates their own budget. 
So the president submits the budget to Congress by the first week in February. This is supposed to be how it works. In reality, sometimes it doesn't. The CBO looks over it and sends a report to both chambers of Congress, the House and the Senate. Then the showdown begins. The Appropriations Committee is the one uh, who is going to hear and set budget targets along with the Budget uh, Committee in the Senate and the House. Reconciliation of bills are made of the budget if it does not meet the targets. And this is such a tough job because you have the CBO's version and the OMB's version and all the agencies fighting for every penny to be saved. And it can become uh, really tense. This uh, is retired member uh, Robert Byrd going over the budget. Basically, by October 1st, all bills should be reconciled, and appropriations means that you have agreed to spend, they voted on, and you've agreed to spend a certain amount of money. If bills are not passed, Congress has to pass a continuing resolution where agencies run on last year's budget, and sometimes they do these for three, four, five, six weeks at a time. This is what we have been doing because Congress has not passed an official budget in the last year, so we keep running on continuing resolutions, which are stopgap measures. Look at the last time that we had, um, and this just denotes blue and red for Democrat and Republican presidents. This is the last time uh, we had a but, uh, surplus under Bill Clinton, of course, any time during warfare. And you can look right here at 2001, an increase in defense spending under President Bush, and I don't have Obama's figures on there, but um, it is not getting any better um, with the deficit spending. I hope that that gives you a quick over, uh, overview of entitlements and social welfare programs, and that ends this portion on it.